Hey everybody, my name's Nate. Welcome to my channel. Recently, a lot of you have been asking about smart telescopes. Well, recently a company from France sent me a smart telescope, but it's not just any smart telescope. In this box, I have a... Where did it go? Well, that's cool. This is a Vespera II by Veonis, but it's their X edition. Since 2016, they've had like the Vespera II and it's been a big success, but Veonis likes to make like special edition versions of their telescopes. And this one, the X edition has a transparent shell. It's pretty cool. You can see all the inner workings of it and stuff. And so this video is gonna be about my experience with this smart telescope over the past few weeks. So let's get into it. Nice foam packaging. We have the Vespera II here in a pretty hard case. You can see the bottom of it sticking out here and uh, what looks like to be a stand, I think, a tripod for it. Awesome, and that is the box. Pretty simple, easy to open. All right, let's open up the Veonis and the stand and see what we have inside. First look. Whoa. Oh, that looks amazing. You never get to see the inside of these things. This is wild. All right, let's open up the stand. Very nice cases with these as well. And I travel quite a bit with gear, so it's good to have great cases. Ooh, we have a shoulder strap, some paperwork, which appears to have a few tools. Ooh, spikes. All right, I can't wait to get this thing set up, so I'm just gonna set it up right now. As far as what this smart telescope has compared to the Vespera II, it has the transparent shell. It also has a built-in hydrometer. Other than that, this is more a limited edition of their Vespera II. And as with most all smart telescopes, you control this with an app. And the app for this unit is Singularity by Veonis. And once you get that, you can connect your phone or tablet directly to it with the network it creates. Good. So once you have this thing set up at night, you just open the app, connect to it, and that's where you can initialize it and then start taking your first images of some deep sky objects. And now for the sake of continuity, I'm just gonna go with the Heart Nebula for this video because that is the one I did multiple times over the past few weeks in different scenarios and stuff like that. Now go figure, as soon as I set this thing up, it was a full moon and uh, the clouds rolled in. But I caught the moon rising with the clouds and I thought that looked pretty cool. Now once the skies did clear, I started to capture the Heart Nebula and I did it live with all of you here on YouTube. And right here are some of the clips from that. All right, so we gotta look for a target. Look for a target. Heart Nebula. Now the stacking process did take 120 minutes as the app recommended for the Heart Nebula. Let's do it. Observe, okay. The alien spacecraft Vespera II. Look at it over there, all cool and stuff. This will start tracking and stacking and giving us a live preview. We got the thing. Ooh, look at that. Yeah! And one of the first things I noticed was the optic quality of the initial previews it was giving me. I did notice that the stars and stuff kind of looked like reddish yellow, but that cleans up in processing real quick. While it's stacking, you can kind of scroll through the images as they layer on top of each other for that preview. And although it is giving you a preview that you can save to your phone, it's not gonna give you a final processed image. And so while the Heart Nebula stacks, let's go ahead and go through the tech specs of the Vespera II. All right, getting super techy with the premium optics and sensor of the Vespera II. So it has a 50 millimeter F5 quadruplet apochromatic lens with like an extra low dispersion lanthanum glass and field corrector for edge to edge clarity. It also for its sensor has the popular Sony IMX585 8.3 megapixel ultra sensitive sensor. Now this sensor is very popular for astrophotography due to its sensitivity. I mean, the details are pretty cool. 
Okay, that, that, that was a lot of words, but basically the optics in this are premium, especially with that lanthanum glass. And that camera sensor is phenomenal. And as you look at the X Edition here, you can see the computer stuff inside, you can see the drive motors, and that's what Veonis wanted to do. They wanted to showcase their engineering, craftsmanship, quality on this unit. And I think they did a really good job. I'm gonna put a link in the description for like the full blown tech specs, but I wanna get back to the Heart Nebula. And when it's done, I'll process it. Okay, as far as the results, um, I wanted to do the Heart Nebula because I've done this on a bunch of different smart telescopes and I'm kind of familiar with it and what it should look like and stuff like that, as well as how much cropping happens and stuff like that. So here is the preview that the Vespera 2 will give you, you just download this to your phone, but that is not the processed image. And the Vespera 2 is not gonna process the image for you. So this video, I don't wanna be on the processed image because the processed image is gonna be kind of up to the talent of the astrophotographer. I'm like middle level with it, I'm not that great. So I sent the data over to my friend Star Kitten and she processed it, sent it back, and it looked much better than the one I had. So here is the one she processed and she said that the data was very clear in quality. There was the cropping though. You know, we had to crop in. That's that alt azimuth stuff that you have to deal with because it's not on an equatorial and it's a two hour ordeal to stack the Heart Nebula. But I thought it looked fantastic and just so much better than the one I did. And maybe I'll show you that another time, the one I did. The quality of the data was really good. It stacked really easy in the program, but I want this video to be about this device, which is more the data collection device and not the astrophotographer in that finished image, because that is gonna be up to you and your skill set, and not exactly what this will provide you, but it will provide you with the quality data to do that and bring out those details. So this gives you the TIFF files and the FITS files, as well as just a JPEG if you want that from the preview. It is just alt azimuth, so it just pans and tilts like this. So for those longer night sessions with like the Heart Nebula, two hours, you could see it really cropped in because it slowly turns in a circle as it's tracking like that. So it'd be kind of neat to see one of these on like an equatorial mount. And I might put it on an equatorial wedge that I have, see if that works. And so my experience has been awesome with this thing. Actually, the other day, I captured my first image of Comet 3i Atlas. And I could type it in manually, the RA and DEC, and it went to it and I stacked it a little bit and there it was. It, probably the coolest little smudge I ever captured. Now, some things I think that it's limited on is it's got like a 25 gigabyte memory and you eat that up real quick. I've, I've completely maxed it out every night I've used it. So a little bit bigger of an internal memory would be nice. A little bit about the battery life of this thing. Four hours seems a bit tight and I was finding it to be three and a half hours um, on cold nights. Now, I didn't have any dew problems. The hydrometer in here worked great. Also, this charger port. Do note that don't plug it in before it initializes and finds its target, because this thing does spin, and you might get your cable wrapped around and, like, break the jack, which would not be good. Now, some people might not want to spend the $2,500 for this unit when it's basically just a Vespera 2. Um, but this is a limited edition, like collector's edition item. So some people are a little more into that, but it does have the built-in hydrometer and it is really cool to look at. Now, another drawback is the light here. When I first got it, this was too bright to take to a star party, by far. They have since updated that and you can dim the light down, which would help a lot for star parties, especially since when it's on, it's lighting up the whole shell and it just becomes a little beacon there. And if you've been to a star party, that's just, it's just too much light. I may have gotten yelled at a few times at star parties, but haven't we all? You'll probably see me using this quite a bit in uh, videos and stuff, but let me know below your questions or comments on it. Thank you, Veyanas, for sending me this special edition. I want everybody to know this is not a paid advertisement for them. They just sent me and said, tell us your experience and well, I've thoroughly enjoyed using this. The experience has been great. I'm gonna be using it more, especially on Comet 3i Atlas and uh, pretty soon here, the Orion Nebula. So I think I think that pretty much 
wraps it up, guys. How did I do? I don't, I don't really do uh, review videos, so I wanted to share my experience with this more than a review, but my experience has been very positive. And if you guys want more videos like this, just let me know below. I have a batch of smart telescopes I'd like to share with you. I get a lot of questions on those. Or if you are interested in being a part of a space and astronomy community, I do have a Discord, and I'm going to put a bunch of information below. And if you want to pick one of these up, I'll have a link there for that. So subscribe for some more space and astronomy content from me, and we're going to be doing a lot more longer videos. Now, if you did watch this video all the way through to the end, November 22nd, the Griffith Observatory in L.A. See you there.